Pete Meyer, technical editor for Motor Age Magazine. And today we're going to talk a little bit about traditional compression testing. Um, oftentimes during the course of a drivability diagnosis, it becomes necessary to check the state of health of the engine. You suspect that the cylinder is not contributing as it should, it might be low on compression. Uh, and this is the traditional method of, of doing that. Now this is just a little four cylinder, so that's not as difficult to do as some of the newer engine designs. And there are alternatives uh, before you spend the customer's money and perform this deep a test. But we're just today going to talk about traditional compression testing alone. Now, to perform the test, we're using an old-fashioned compression gauge and adapter line to put this in place of the spark plug. Normally, I like to remove all the plugs before I begin the test. I also want to make sure I disable the fuel system so while I'm performing the test, I won't wash the cylinders down with raw gas. Uh, that could lead to contamination of the oil, washing down the, uh, the cylinder walls and creating a, a loss of ring seal. Problems may not have been there um, before I got the car. I uh, also want to make sure that the battery is in good condition. Uh, if necessary, I'll put a battery charger on it. I want to make sure that the cranking speed of the engine stays relatively consistent so that my results are consistent. Uh, we're going to um, remove, or we've already removed the spark plug uh, on the one cylinder. Uh, I haven't removed them all just for the sake of our example. But this is a little four cylinder, so that shouldn't be too much of a problem for us. I'm going to insert the adapter line until it's snug. Connect the gauge. And then lay it out of the way so uh, drive belts, accessory pulleys don't hit it while I'm cranking the engine over. If I have an assistant, I'll let them crank the engine over while I watch the gauge. But in this case, it's just me. So now I'm going to go ahead and crank the engine over. Uh, in the process, I want to hold the throttle wide open and uh, crank it over long enough to get a peak reading. I'm going to check the reading on the gauge. In this case, it's 150 psi. Generally, that's a pretty good number, so uh, right now I don't suspect any issues with this cylinder. I'm going to bleed off the pressure, and then move to the next one in order, recording the readings that I get as I go along. Once I have all the readings together, I'll compare them to the service information system to see if they're in spec, uh, to make sure that cylinder to cylinder, there's no huge difference or disparity between the two. Uh, if I do find one I suspect is weak, I'll repeat the test, but this time I'll do what's called a wet test. That simply means that before I connect the adapter, I'm going to put a small amount of oil, about a teaspoon, into the cylinder through the spark plug hole, and then perform the same test. If the uh, rings are weak, the oil will temporarily seal them, and the cylinder pressure will rise. If I don't see a, a change in pressure from that first test, then I'm going to suspect a problem with the valve train. Uh, in that case, I'm going to uh, move to an uh, additional test called a leak down test, to help me isolate exactly where that loss of compression is. Once I have that information, I can prepare the estimate and uh, give that estimate to my customer for repair.